19 days from today, a new president will be sworn in to steer the leadership of Africa's most populous country amid petitions at the presidential election tribunals. What should Nigerians expect? How is Electoral Act 2022 impacting Nigeria's politics and democracy? We'll be taking a look at a new era today on The Breakfast. We also are going to be looking at the papers to see what the headlines are saying today. And uh, that one will be visiting all the newspapers that are available to us to look at what the headlines are. And that segment, we call it Off the Press. And uh, right after that, we'll be looking at the top trending uh, issues on the social media and elsewhere. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menong Izigwe. I am Nyamgul Agaji. It's a pleasure having you today. It's Wednesday. It's midweek. While you're doing your, you're preparing yourself to have your midweek service, we're starting us today on the <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> okay. So welcome to the program. Welcome. The theme for today is the role of Nigerians in nation building. Mm. How should Nigerians uh, perform? What should they do? It's not just about what my country yeah. can do for me, but what I can give to my country and what I can do for my country. Uh, my country. Are Nigerians positioned? Yeah. Are they conditioned mm -hmm. to give back to the country? Or is it just about, oh, this is not working. That is not working. This government is not doing that. That governor is not doing that. What am I doing as a Nigerian to yeah. build Nigeria and move it forward? Nigeria is um, a geographical entity, but it cannot be Nigeria without its people. So for Nigeria to be what we want it to be, it has to be the people that will put in their very best to mm -hmm. make sure that Nigeria becomes that Eldorado we want it to be. Yes, we know that government has a role to play, but government can only do what we give them the chance to do. Because if we let them do anything that they want to do with impunity, the word that we like to use, it's because we have given them the chance to do that. Because if they know that when they do a particular thing, the people will not be happy about it, the people will grumble, the people will take action, they will not do what they do. So it's actually our responsibility to hold them accountable in any way that we see fit that is not violent. And the leaders emanate from us. Yes. The corrupt leaders emanate from us. Mm -hmm. The stealing leaders emanate from us. The ones who mess up the elections and the electoral process, they emanate from us. And again, you ask, how many times have Nigerians recalled their leaders from the National Assembly or the State Houses of Assembly? Never. We don't often hear that, if Never. at all. Yeah. But it's in the Constitution. There's a provision that if they do not perform, you recall them. Just bring them back home and say, okay, you someone don't try. Else, Come sit down. Yeah, us. someone Let else another go person try. and try. Yeah. But what you find is when someone is indicted for corruption, mm. people from his part of the country would come and say, leave him, he's our own now chief. Our own chief, then, uh, right. <laughs> so we'll make it be as it be. It's our turn to chief. <laughs> it will look on to chief. Yeah. But you, you see, I have this experience where a local government chairman mm. went into office. He had a Beatles car, mm. which we used to call Totti's car in those days. So yeah. he had a Beatles car. He went, served his tenor, came out with that little beetle car. He didn't change a car. He left millions of uh, Naira in the coffers of the local government. He was coming home. He, he, he comes from somewhere that I am very close to. He was coming home and he would take his gun, go into the bush and hunt. He was just down to earth like that. He was he an abnormal Nigerian. He, yeah, he didn't steal, <laughs> he didn't do anything. And guess what? Mm. People were now calling him names that he, he didn't have sense. How would you leave that kind of money? And of course, the next chairman that came just cleaned everything and said he's starting on a new slate, uh -huh. you know. But he didn't steal that money. He did what he could do and left the rest for the people who were coming behind him to take. And if you hear the names they gave to this man, if tomorrow he has an opportunity to lead, if he doesn't want to be called those kind of names, he will be tempted to do 
the needful. That's why I called him the abnormal, because that's the way he's yeah. described, and you have just confirmed that. That is the way Nigerians see you, unfortunately. Yeah. If so you do not it's steal fault. government money, mm. it's, it's a cake. It's our turn to steal it. It's our turn to take our own portion of it. And then I ask, if we are not united, you know, I kept saying 62 years is enough time for us to consolidate and say we are a people mm. and own this space mm -hmm. and own this country and say, look, this is ours to build. And until we have that spirit of this is ours to build, Nigeria will continue to crawl. The stagnation will be just there until we find ourselves that spirit of oneness to say this is ours to build. And you know, one thing that I noticed during the these elections that took place this year, especially the presidential, the, it was the build-up mm. to the presidential. For the first time, I saw what looked like the spirit yeah. of Nigeria. Yeah. I saw what looked like the Nigerian dream, which I didn't think we ever had. What is your Nigerian dream? Did we ever have it? But towards the build-up to these elections, it did seem like we had it, mm. like Nigerians for the first time. And that was birthed um, by the promise by the ANEC chairman yeah. that the elections will be transmitted electronically. And since Nigerians have lost so much confidence in the process, so many Nigerians weren't even thinking of contesting or joining in voting, yeah. you know, the incoming leaders. But when that promise was made by the chairman, it birthed a new thing inside of Nigerians. And you could see Nigerians for the first time Earning Nigerians saying, okay, we're going to make this work. We're going to come out. This is it. Everybody was campaigning. But uh, something Anak did happened what they did. somewhere. Anak did what they did. Now they're in court. Now yeah, they're spending money, taxpayers' money, our money, to, to fight against us. And I don't know how that works out. Um, money was voted for them to conduct an election. Now they're having some other extra money. It's as if they kept some money for litigations, they kept, kept some money for court cases because if 400 billion, billion was to go into preparation for election, where is the extra money coming from? I always ask this question and I don't know how they get this money to go into the courts, hire so many sons, senior advocates of Nigeria to defend them that what they did was right. I don't know how they do that. Uh, but um, this is our Nigeria. No matter how disappointed we might be, mm -hmm. Nigeria is still our country, no matter how it is. Because if you go out of your house and you say, my daddy is a stupid man, he doesn't do this, doesn't do that, mm -hmm. thinking that people will hate your daddy, you're just in, a, in a, an indirect Cutting way saying, I'm a useless person. I come from a useless breed. I come, I'm a useless person. That's what you're saying. So... If we keep talking down on Nigeria, uh, trying to bring down Nigeria because a few people are making it very unbearable to, to call ourselves Nigerians, so you, it, be, it becomes an embarrassing thing to address yourself like a Nigerian. Yes, they might be doing that, but what are you, like Maureen asks, what are you doing to put Nigeria out there for people to see? We've seen sportsmen and women, whenever they achieve anything, the way they they wrap our flag around themselves, the way they behave when the national anthem is being sung, mm -hmm. the way uh, they take pride in the fact that they come from Nigeria. Even some of them whose successes cannot be attributed to what Nigeria directly has done, but they do this. So do something in your little corner and make sure Nigeria is proud of you if they cannot be proud of anybody else. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's as, uh, if you find, go to the, the, the movie industry, mm -hmm. the entertainment industry. We're fantastic, fantastic. Making Nigeria proud. And you know what? And go to science. Yeah, you know go what? Niger the entertainment industry has little or no influence coming from the government. Like, they're not giving their money every year, take this grant to do this. At one point they did that, but it's not all the time. They are self-sustaining, mm -hmm. as it were, and they're doing well, which means it tells us that the government doesn't have to have a presence in our lives before we can succeed. So the tech industry even, the government still doesn't understand much about it, mm -hmm. but it's flourishing. It's in flourishing. Nigeria. Nigerians are so, yeah. tech savvy. We are. So we don't, need, we don't need government for everything. Yes, we need them for the essential things to create an enabling environment and all that, but we don't always have to blame the government. They might do badly, 
but you do what do do your bit. Do your bit, and part of doing your bit is also, as Nyamgo has said, holding them accountable. Yeah. If they know, if they have you to fear, when mm. they go to the markets, mm. they will watch their steps. If yeah. they have you to fear, when they come to community meetings, they will watch their steps. But if all you do is praise them when they steal, mm -hmm. praise them when they drop some crumbs around you, then you've lost your right to question them. You've lost your right to chase them out of office when you should. Yeah, a, a leader, who, a, a politician who comes, organizes his people, gives scholarship to the people, will not be regarded so much as the one who comes home every once in a while, buys a cow for the community, mm -hmm. buys them wine and all that, something that is ephemeral, that will just end you know, after a while. But the person who is planning for the future may not even be regarded. So we need to change our psyche so that they themselves will know what they need to do. Democracy is about the people. We have a voice in what happens to us, who governs us and how they govern us. That's democracy. If they build a road, it's not dividends of democracy. That's governance. It's different it's from... Part of their yes. It's, it's part, part of their, their responsibility. responsibility. Even if they were a dictator... And it's our money anyway. Even if it's that a dictatorship, they will build the roads. They will build the bridges. I always use Third Mainland Bridge, done by Babangida. That was not a civilian administration. Mm -hmm. That was not democracy. It was just governance. They do the things they need to do. But democracy is when you have a voice. And one of your voices is vote rightly, fight for your uh, rights in any way that is legal, mm -hmm. you know, be there when the decisions are being made. You do that and Nigeria will move on. And then we can identify those of us who are good enough. And we know those of us who are so bad that they should never go to represent they us. They should never. They should never. They should not graduate from being bad governors to, to, to those who go to the National Assembly and to make, make laws, laws for, for us. us. Yeah. That should not be happening. It's so sickening to see some of them there. They messed up their state. They stole all the money. Mm. You go to their state, there's nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. The states were not viable under them. They didn't make them viable. They left them not viable. And then they moved to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. It's just so crazy. And then before you know it, they want to become Senate president. And before you know it, they want to become president of the country. And they are just having their way. And the circle goes round and round. And Nigeria is the worst for it. Yeah, well, the National Assembly is the retirement uh, home for, for governors. And, uh, and the annoying thing as, as well is that you're collecting salary, uh, what my friend will call Amroba salary, <laughs> as a, a, a one-time governor. You're still collecting another one as a senator. And, uh, you know, it just, it just, I can't wrap my head around it how someone has said, okay, I've retired, I'm no longer a governor. It's bad enough that you're serving for four years and you have or to eight get, years. or eight years, and you have to have that kind of humongous amount as retirement benefit for you. Crazy. And changing of cars and houses, uh, and houses and every once in a while and servants and all that. And then a retiree that has been working for 35 years doesn't have his pension at all. But you are there collecting. Religiously, you're collecting your Religiously. money. Religiously. And all that. And then you're going to the Senate again, and to you're still collecting collect that. It's... And do nothing, by the way. So who is going to make the law to remove all this money for us to be able to spend? We who cannot be governors or National Assembly members. Oh, well. well things need to change. Today, we'll be taking a look at a new era in the country. Mm -hmm. But let's move forward now to top trending. Uh, the Supreme Court has affirmed Adeleke as the Ocean State Governor. Mm. Congratulations, Congratulations to our dancing governor. Yeah, yeah. Everybody remembers that he dances. And it's, good. it's a good thing. Some people wanted to use that as you know, a mockery, a dancing senator and all that. But I think it's a good plus for him. People kind of love him. And I, was I love him. I, I was listening to a, <laughs> a program yesterday, and the presenter kept asking, why is everybody so excited that he won this case? And I think it's simple. People just need a, a fresh air, a breath of fresh air, no matter who it is. It's, Adeleke is not much of the establishment. Even though he belongs to the PDP, he's not much of the establishment. Nigerians are looking for fresh air. Yeah, fresh air. And that's what one of the things he represents. We have a track. Mm -hmm. Let's call for that track at this point in time. Mm -hmm. The government is people's you know, government. They ain't seen nothing yet. We have a lot of goodies in stock for our lovely Osho people. Even though there was little distraction, we were focused. You journalists can testify 
to our 100 days in office. I mean, you have seen it all. You went with me, you walked with me, you saw what, what, what we have done. My message is that there's no winner, there's no vanquish. So everybody should come together now that everything is over now. Let's come together and work together and make us great again. I thank God Almighty because one with God is a majority. We thank God because from the onset, we have put our trust in the Lord. And I want to thank God that he did not put us to shame. Not surprising because it is expected, a judgment that is expected because uh, anybody that believes in the rule of law and equity, justice, will know that the judgment should go that way. Because um, the beavers in question is the new electoral law that any law should support. And that is what happened. And we give glory to Almighty government. Yeah, Adeliki, there. Congratulations to him. You know, like I said, he he came in not like the establishment. Uh, uh, all that he came in to replace his brother when his brother died uh, to become the senator. So he wasn't someone who woke up and said, "I must be a senator." His brother was the politician, but he came in because uh, on the goodwill of you know on the back of the brother who was a good person, uh, according to what is say is being said, and he too. Coming from a family that has been a judge, a good family, you know, uh, he became senator. From senator, he contested to become governor. And a lot of people believe that he was robbed the, the last time in 2019 mm. when they, uh, the, the, this governor that has just left, Oyetola, uh, was sworn in. The Supreme Court did some abracadabra, almost the same <laughs> thing as is done, was done in Imo State. And Oyetola came into power. So... People now rejoiced and felt that this was justice being done at this time. So they wanted him. They love him. They want him to dance, you know. And then someone said, uh, if, even if he will not do anything anymore, as soon as he got in, he paid the arrears of salaries that previous governments have been owing, mm. you know. Something that the government should be doing without being, without any prompting. Without any prompting. Someone will owe so much that the person who comes to do a duty that a government should ordinary, ordinarily do will be applauded for doing his duty. That's one of the things that, it's crazy. that bad governance, it's bad crazy. leadership has done to the psyche of Nigerians. And, you know, look at, looking at the judgment by the Supreme Court yesterday, one of the things said was that the beavers mm. um, is not the only means by which the electoral, the results should be given. Meaning that, um, you know, whether the beavers worked accurately or not should not be the basis for which to cancel that result because the beavers could mis malfunction mm. you know the battery could have problem and so you begin to also ask is this going to impact yeah that's the question ongoing I was going to ask. presidential uh petitions going on but you see cases are one based on evidence and arguments in mm. court mm. so it may not have any kind of import whatsoever but of course we are watching to see how all of that is going to be playing out mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, Adelike, congratulations to you. And uh, I just wanted to point out that he sounded so much like Davido. He always sounds like Davido. Blood is thick. Yeah, yeah. Blood and is and thick. I can wonder. He's his uncle. Yes, I'm sure he was that uncle that always buys bread, always, <laughs> always buys the toys, always comes and dances with them, always, because there's always that one uncle or one auntie that yeah. everybody wants to visit, go on holidays to his house and all that. I'm sure Adelike, um, the governor, Ademola, you know, I listened kind of to him to yesterday David. on an interview where he said he actually should have been a musician. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's a good thing that his, his nephew and his son have taken that path. Mm -hmm. And um, it is time now to, uh, he was also asked regarding dancing. And he said, well, it's time for everything. It's time now to work. And yeah. Quite well put. But he still will dance. Mm -hmm, he will you dance. cannot remove I mean, that look at him. He's dancing. <laughs> he must dance. <laughs> and I love the spirit, you know. I love his spirit. He's a happy man. Yes. A jolly good fellow. Yeah. All right. So the second top trend in APC Secretariat rocked by protest over marginalization of the central north. Okay, North Central is complaining they should have the Senate presidency or the Speaker and all that. Uh, the South East is complaining they should have the Senate presidency or the Speaker and all that. So every, every zone will complain. Um, during the build-up to the 
uh, election itself. Um, did they see this coming? Were they against whoever they were against because they wanted to get to this point where they're going to have the Senate presidency or not? Um, did they argue so much about this zoning of things uh, before this time? Or are they just trying to, you know, we have lost everything else, so let us get this. Do they deserve it? Do they not deserve it? Uh, were we not arguing that we are looking for competence rather than, you know, ethnicity and everything? So zoning to a zone, should that not be something they should just close their mouths and try to, try to market themselves based on competence, not the geopolitical zone. So if they have said, uh, Muslim, Muslim, for instance, doesn't matter. We want competence. Okay, fine. Uh, then zone shouldn't matter as well. We want competence. <laughs> I, I don't think they should be arguing any of the states anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is playing out in the APC is um, it's quite... Um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's quite interesting to, as we watch what is playing out in that party unfold, especially with regards to who becomes the Senate president. You can see that the president-elect has chosen Akbabio, mm -hmm. and um, should that have happened? That's a question. Should that have happened? Should a name have been given openly? And then what about Indibos? Mm -hmm. What about Indibos? Do they mean nothing to this party? That's one of the questions that really comes to mind. Yeah, well, uh, Ndibos were so because much Because you can't support, say that, that you know. there are no um, Ndibos that could have been given that. Mm. I mean... But also there, there are so many Ndibos that could have been given the presidency, if you ask me. So mm. if they're thinking about uh, uh, equity, uh, I don't know. Do they always have to be only Senate presidents? Ndibos have been Senate presidents, very many of them. Evans and Warren was the Senate president, uh, Okadibo was the Senate president, mm. and so many other people. So, uh, Can they, they be it, more than that? It's, it's not marginalization. Has this uh, not central ever been? I doubt. Uh, except, okay, maybe if you're counting Saraki as not central, uh, that mm, was a yeah, Senate so president and all that. But um, so The way he came in was, you know... Yeah. Was not handpicked. He wasn't handpicked. He wasn't handpicked. You know, he wasn't, uh, there was a it wasn't real an anointed drama. candidate. It was a real drama yes, where some people candidate. were asked to go for a meeting somewhere, and those other people came into the house, and the mace was there, and they elected their president. Their, yeah, the Senate president. Uh, we don't know what will happen now because the opposition party is spoiling for a fight. So if they do that, they either might choose someone from the APC that they are comfortable with and do what they want to do. Because I see no reason why the National Assembly cannot elect their, their own, own members, exactly. their own principles. Exactly. It has to be the president-elect coming to anoint somebody. It has to be the... So how will they function? How will they, the oversight function be? How can they not be rubber-stamped? And that is one of the things that Nigerians are speaking against this Ninth Assembly that's going out now, that's been more of a rubber stamp mm -hmm. house than any other. They said it before they came in that everything is going to be a mm. yes thing for them, and they, they demonstrated it. So and it's the not president, good for our democracy. It is in this assembly or this, the, this dispensation that we can see a president borrowing money without approval, spending, spending the money it before without... he comes to get approval. And it's, it's you know, everything can just move on fine. It is this our Nigeria. Yes, you want to take the we, we will third survive top trending. Uh, well, uh, NLC indefinite strike. This strike, I think, has been called off uh, in Abia State over unpaid salaries. There's been an agreement between the government and the people, so uh, the strike has been called off. But um, uh, when a spade is called a spade, sometimes it helps. Uh, the Abia State government hasn't really done so well. Um, I was talking about the other day uh, there was a, an interview on another television station where the Abia state government governor was asked what he does for uh, people who give birth in... Mm, in uh, governor mind. Look at yes, him. Mm, in, in the hospitals, in government hospitals in Abia state. And he said he gives the, 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 the women 500, 500 naira. And when he was asked, 500 naira, your excellency, he said, ah, do you know what 500 naira will do to the poor? So you're comfortable that the poor person who comes to the government hospital, first of all, he's coming to the government hospital, you know, or at least you think that that person should be so poor. That's why he's coming to the government hospital. Is that not an indictment? You're telling people that the only people that come to the government hospitals are the ones that cannot afford private hospitals because 
is so bad. Mm. And then you're giving them 500 naira, that one will not cover transportation. That one will not cover uh, feeding for the child for one week. Does he even know how much a, a can of milk is that a child feeds on for a week? Some of them eat a lot, and it, it's so gladdening when you see a child eating well. But you give 500 naira to do what? To buy paracetamol? You know, this, this thing you're saying is quite, um, is quite deep, and I'm excited that Ohani is in Nibo worldwide. It's part of what we'll be taking a look mm -hmm. at today, how that they've called for the revival of the Igbo Governors Forum. Yeah. Because these people need to come together and put their arts together. Well, if you they, ask they me, I, to, I think they've failed. They, they have failed their Over people. The, they have failed. They have really failed their people. The Igbos, the Igbos um, have suffered so much, you know, and, and, and speaking to facts and truth, they have suffered so much. Unfortunately, also, part of the things they've suffered have come from their own people. Yeah, if not all Bad the leadership. Yeah. Bad leadership. Bad leadership. When are they going to get it right? Uh, you see, when the presidential elections was uh, in the days leading up to that, um, we saw all the backstabbing, all the betrayals, everything. They were coming from the governors mm -hmm. of Igbo stock. They were coming from the Igbo people themselves, people mobilizing against Igbo candidates and all that, from the primaries of various parties to when uh, some of them had the candidacy for their parties, we saw what they were doing, and yeah. it was really disheartening. And then, you cannot tell me that five governors from a zone cannot mobilize themselves and make sure the IPOP does not make laws that the people will obey. For Binding instance, till this people. date, the Monday sit at home even though the people say, okay, it's no longer there, it's being enforced. People are afraid to go out. Yeah. And the governors have done next to nothing. And the regions are losing billions if you t every do you know month. What, what Monday market is, lost. Monday market, how people used to come from all over the, the, the country to attend Monday markets within the East, Abba and Onichan, the, Onicha and all the rest of them. Now it is no more. You can't travel to, let's say, Cross River because you have to pass through Abba and all the Igbo states. Yeah. And a lot of things are happening. And the governors are there. They're not doing anything. They will tell you it's the, the federal government that takes care of security. Yeah. They have failed. They have and failed. I, their and if they're doing a revamp of the, of the governor's forum, they should look critically at the things that are bringing them down and bringing them to bad repute, uh, as far as I'm concerned. They both used to be respected. They need to continue to be respected. And that ship has to be steered by the governors because they are the chief security officers and they are the, the final decision making body, as it were, in the Southeast. Yeah. So you're watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to take a break. We'll be back. Stay with us.